Ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and listeners, here we are, another podcast. And this is this is one that's very special because our guest has assured me that he has turned his mobile phone off and it's probably the first time for God knows how many years. So I really appreciate that, Rusi. And we're talking about Rusi Batlawala, who's the uh, chairman of Chapman Freeborn. So Rusi, great to have you on board. Yeah, great to be here, Chris. And um, you know, I've got the I've got basically the whole of the office to myself today, so we can uh, we can be as loud and as long as we need to. Very good, lovely. And and the reference to the phone, I mean, that's an exceptional thing for you to do. So I really, really appreciate, it, and I hope your friends, colleagues, and your wife won't be too upset when they realise that you've done it. <laughs> now, I, I'm sure I'm sure I'll get away with this uh, with this hour or so, or however long we need. Uh, I'm sure I'll get be able to do that not a problem good man good man now russi um what we normally do is we ask our guests just to give a little bit of a brief background as to what they're actually doing now within their organization and obviously we can't get away from this damn pandemic so you know what has it meant to your business so over to you sir okay well let, where we are today as a as a business um obviously you know i, I think i mentioned this to you a couple of days ago it's interesting to see how all of these freight businesses that normally are, are, you know, moaning and groaning about bad figures and so on. Now that we're, you know, the figures are incredible. <laughs> now that the figures are incredible, nobody's saying anything, which is quite funny. Exactly. Um, Keep it very um, quiet. You know, unless you're, you know, unless you're on the on the stock exchange like, you know, the Atlas or somewhere where you have to declare your figures, and um, and, and Atlas did last week, and obviously record figures and and everybody else's, and then obviously my organisation as as well. We've had a record year. Um, uh, basically, because uh, you know the, the freighter business has has, has boomed, and, and we we've been extremely well positioned to to, to be part of that, and, and and done very well, and, and still are. The business is still going very very strongly. Yeah, no, so, it's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. Right. So now we've established, and and you're your chairman. So do you want to say a few words about the transition? Because yes. uh, you know it's a lovely story. So thirty odd years, thirty three years, or thirty four years. Yeah. 1987 start, man and boy. That's right. No, I've, I've been around a, a long time and, and, you know, I'm not as fortunate as you, Chris. You've got a lot of hair. I'm, I'm losing it. Although it's one of the great things about the pandemic, actually, here in Germany, all the hairdressers are closed. So I've actually got some hair now. Um, you know, my, 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 my family's pushing me to go to the hairdressers again and then I'll be back to normal. But I know that's one of the advantages of the pandemic. Um, no, I, I've I've taken over the role as chairman recently, uh, back in October, um, by my own my own will to to, to do so. I've been you know, CEO and, and director of this, that, and the other for God knows how many years, and and now I'm in a bit of a position where I can you know sit back. I I would probably say I'm you know I I call myself or my my official title is chairman, but I still am you know chairman and charter broker because I'm still yeah. very much involved in and I still enjoy um, the, the, the business, the trading business of, 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 of buying and selling charters and, I, and I, I get a kick out of that and I'm very happy. But, you know, the, the decision to, to take a step back from the CEO role is, is something that's you know, very important for me because I believe every business, you know, needs change at the top to, to reinvigorate itself, come up with new ideas, come up with uh, new things. I mean, it's just incredibly important. And I think people that are there forever, you know, they, they, they need to look at themselves in the mirror and say, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's time to move a step aside and let somebody else come in and, and maybe even do it better than I did it. And um, so I've done that. And, uh, you know, we've got Eric Erbacher, who uh, was previously at uh, Cargloves in. Eric's only been here with us now for, for I think, four and a half months. Um, absolutely brilliant. Exactly what I'd hoped for. Uh, An absolute breath of fresh air. And that's not only me probably saying that. I'm pretty sure a lot of a lot of people who work for us have, are also saying that. So you know, it, it's worked really well. Uh, it's been a it's been a long uh, a long journey from uh, many 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 years ago back in uh, when was it 80, 87 when I joined Chapman. So um, you know, I've uh, I've passed on the back baton and uh, and I'm now able to sort of sit in the background and and just get involved where and when I think it's necessary and, and do the things that I really enjoy doing. Yeah, no, it's admirable your approach and and what you're saying there about Eric, which which is great. Um, now, you, your investors are obviously they must be so pleased as well. Oh yes, I, I, mean, I don't I don't mean that you stepped down as CEO, but I mean how well the business is going. 
No, obviously, um, you know, obviously they've they've had a they've had a you know they they bought us uh, at a, at a good time. Um, you know, the fact that the business has has, has boomed, they, nobody could have expected that. I'm very happy for them. Um, they've been incredibly supportive. They've um, you know they've invested in our business. They've um, you know we, we we have a we have a controlled fleet of aircraft, um, and they've invested in aircraft that we are we're using to. To uh, to um, to do charters with and and that's what you know that was why it was the right decision at the right time to to go in and, and actually look at selling the business uh, and and moving on. So they are very happy. There's no question about that. And um, you know, but there's there's lots of room for improvement. And and that's you know that's with the new CEO now and and, and his team. You know, there's a lot of new things and a lot of good ideas. But we are incredibly well positioned uh, going forward, uh, Chris. I'm, I'm, I must say we've done done very very well over the years and um, you know just a, a few simple rules of, of you know doing business that have uh, that has made that possible and those rules being I suppose the, the one one I probably would would say is um, not being greedy that's something that is, is very, very very good yeah very important um, the second thing is and, and you know this is this is probably more my personal thing is that you know doing business is all about giving and taking and you know uh, if you can't give you can't take and I think in a business that is very, very, very relationship driven, um, it's it's like every relationship. If you can't give, if, you, if it's not give and take, it doesn't work. And so we've, um, you know, whether it's staff, whether it's suppliers, whether it's clients, you know, you have to work in, in both directions. You've got to you've got to give and you've got to be able to take. If you can't if you can't um, if you can't give, you can't take it. If you can't take, you can't give. So so very simple. But those are you know, those are kind of the basic things. You know, a lot of. A lot of um, uh, you know not being greedy and and you know respecting the fact that your your people your staff are the what what really makes the whole thing happen and you know we have very very limited uh, staff turnover there are lots of people that have been with the business for for decades um, here in, in my, my office in Frankfurt I've got two that have been here for 30 years I've got tw people there for 20 years lots for 15 years and we're a, we're a you know very very uh, strong business in terms of, of people that have been with us a long time, and that means lots of strong relationships and um, yeah, and that gives us the position that we're in today. Yeah, no, no, very very solid pillar, and uh, I've been I've been at many many uh, functions and business meetings and award ceremonies and and seen you and your team up on the stage very very often. So it's it, it reflects well within the community as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the business, you know, Chris, the business as, as such, you know, charter broking or or trading, as if you like. I mean, it's in, in the aviation part. The thing that that's kind of kept my interest going all these years. You know, I I, I was um, you know I was let go from school at the tender age of sixteen because I, it just it just bored me. It, it bored me incredibly, and um, and I, I started working uh, for a for a, uh, an American car hire company uh, called Alamo Alamo Rent a Car. Lots of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And I was in a sales office in, and I was thinking about this prior to this call. You know, I was in a sales office in uh, in Kingston or Surbiton, I think it was at the time, and we were a GSA, and, and we had the system. We had, this was back in the what was it, early eighties then, and we had a system. So travel agencies would call up, and then you'd um, you'd get a booking, and you'd enter it into the system. Very simple, and you know, it was it was an interesting bit. It was interesting work, but. I very soon got bored with it because um, you know it was just a, sing a simple system. You always put your booking in. You know, two weeks Miami pick up, drop off. You know, drop off Orlando, and it was getting bored. It got ex it got interesting for me when the the system started saying no cars available. Yeah. And then that's when I got really excited about it, and I figured out a way to override the system so that it would always give me a booking. And and once I'd done that, I, you know, the excitement and the interest sort of went. And, and you know, I, I then you know, moved over to Germany, started working for airlines and then chat and Freeborn. And this is the amazing thing about the charter business. You, you just can't stop learning. There are so many systems that you can override, but there's so many different aircraft, so many different airports, uh, so many different types of cargo. And, you know, after 33 years, I, I still, you know, I, I amaze myself someone, I think, bloody, I didn't know that. And, you know, Little things like just recently, I um, was talking to somebody about the new 777-300SF, which is a, a new, from my perspective, probably the freighter of the future, um, the special freighter that's going to be now uh, coming on, coming into the market in 2023-24. You know, somebody said to me, well, it has a larger volume than a 747. And I said, no, don't be silly. 
can't be. There I am being the, you know, the super professional knows it all, and I was wrong. And it's actually true that this, you know, this new triple seven is coming out of the market has a bigger, a bigger volume uh, available than a, than a seven four seven. So you keep learning, and 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 I think, you know, after thirty three years, if I really look, think back and say, well, why why have I stuck around? And it's because of always something new, always the. You know, always the next step, always the next opportunity, always learning something. And um, you know, anybody who wants to get into 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 the aviation business, what we do is just really, really um, is, is is always something new. Well, it is, and it's lovely that you say that because uh, I think I think it doesn't matter how old you are, if you carry on learning and you enjoy what you do, it's almost not like work. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, the, 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 the way the business is, it, it, it's, just, it, it's just so different every day. And um, you know, whether it, um, it, whether it is you know, PPE flights or, or it's other stuff, I mean, it, it's always a challenge and it's always trying to come up with a solution. And that's what, you know, that's what Charter Broking is about, adding value and coming up with a solution. And you know, if you can come up with a solution, then you're, you're doing your job properly. And you know, the way to do that is to be creative, think out of the box, and you know, have the relationships. And, um, and that's really what I think has, you know, has kept me sane over all these years and, and learning something new all the time and, and keeping my interest going. Because I, you know, I'm someone that, like I said, with the, with the computer back in the days of Alamo, you know, it, it, was, it, was, um, it, was got, it got boring very, very quickly. So in this business, you just really can't get bored if you're, if you're, uh, if you're involved on the, in the front line day to day. Yeah, so overriding and bypassing systems. That's what Alamo will remember you for now. Well, I guess that probably, but that's going a long, long, long way back. So yeah, yeah, but it set you in good stead. Now you said about all the different solutions and options. So one of the lovely things, lovely things that you've you've been involved in, and, and I'm sure you've got a story about each one of the each one of the products or the verticals. But from oil and gas, humanitarian aid, you've got heavy and outsized, different types of dangerous goods, aerospace, automotive onboard courier, livestock, especially with the horses in Tradco. You've got leasing, you've got um, evacuation flights, tour operators. You've also got something, mice. How did you come to that? How did you come to that name? What was the background behind that? Okay, well, hang on. Mice stands for meetings, yeah. uh, incentives. Conferences. Conferences and exhibitions. I mean, that's, that's basically passenger aircraft, uh, commercial, commercial aircraft. But, you know, all of these verticals, uh, Chris, every single one of them, um, it's, it's kind of changed over the, over, the, over the decades as well. So we are involved in every one of these uh, uh, verticals in some to a larger degree as into the others. But, you know, our, our business, and I think the, you know, the broking business, um, maybe not for everybody in the, in the, in the broking business, certainly for our business, has changed quite dramatically over the last um, 10 years we you know going back 10 years ago or maybe a little bit longer 12 years ago you know 100 percent of our revenues um, came from buying and selling a charter so you know going to a freight forwarder and saying <coughs> I've got aircraft, uh, making a margin and selling that was it and you know the business has changed so we've had to change and we've had to adapt and and you know today with all these different verticals um, onboard career animal transportation uh, automotive uh, charters with Arcus Air that we bought um, we bought last year, um, and um, uh, Magma Aviation, big yeah. big player. Um, you know our actual core business of 10, 12, 15 years ago has gone down quite quite considerably to probably only about forty percent of our total revenues now. Um, and and that's you know that's not a that's not a, that's not a problem. On the contrary, that's actually what we've been trying to achieve is to get away from uh, the reliance purely on being the, you know, the third party charter broker, um, trying to, to get, in, get in between two to put a deal together. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're, um, you know, with, with particularly with, uh, with Magma, we, you know, we have our own aircraft uh, that we control. Uh, with Arcus Air, we have aircraft that we control. So we're, you know, we're in a very strong position, I believe, to, um, you know, to, to, to not only be the charter broker, uh, but also to be a provider of assets when, when, and when, and if they are, they're needed. So, okay, good. That, and that, 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 that's great. Now you mentioned Arcus and also Magma. 
what what was the thinking behind you know wanting to go away from the traditional name but also having a different story or a different vertical there okay well, well magma to, to explain with magma when magma first set set up i think it was in 2012 uh we we were we took a share in the in the company at the time and in 2016 we, we took over the majority share and uh, now in 2000 and uh, I, think, I think 20 or 21, I think 20, in 20, we took over the remaining uh, share, so that we're now 100% shareholder. Um, really, the, the same goes for Arcus, is that we, what we wanted to do was to basically control our own destiny going forward. You know, as a pure broker, you're, or as a trader, you're reliant on um, someone coming to you uh, to find, to, to come up with a solution to something that he or she can't find themselves. Yeah, and, you know the business has changed, and and you know there isn't that huge amount of um, of airlines and aircraft that are that are just sitting there waiting for people to call. You know, there's a lot more now with uh, with social media. A lot of these airlines present themselves out onto the market. A lot of the freight forward have set up with their own charter departments. I mean, the the work, the business of a charter broker has got a lot tougher um, if he doesn't uh, if he doesn't have his own assets. Yes, and I yes. think. This is something though we recognize a long time back. This isn't new. We, we, this is, goes back probably to, to 214, 213, where we said we've got to make sure we can control our own destiny and not be you know, subject to the, the whims of a freight forwarder who may want to work with us one day and may not want to work with us and go direct the other day. The same with the airlines. And, and you know, the airlines, um, they will, they will you know, do incentive, incentive agreements with freight forwarders that will include charters. Yeah. So, you know, why would, you know, why would somebody necessarily um, go to Etihad uh, uh, and not uh, uh, go to Etihad not directly and go to a broker? So, you know, these are all things that have developed over here. I mean, the business is still there. It's still a healthy business. But if you're going, if you're looking, when I, when I look back, looking to where we are today, I think we came up with the right, the right decisions at that time. And um, Arcus Air is, 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 a, is a different, slightly different with, you know, Arcus has been a, a customer, a competitor, a friend, uh, everything since about 30 years, since I've known them. Um, and we, we were, you know, we were given the opportunity to, to take them over and um, uh, they are very, very strong in their, in their market niche and we let them carry and continue as they are and um, they do very well. Um, but it gives us also the opportunity to go to a client and say, well, we have our own, we have our own metal. So we don't only have someone else's aircraft, we, we, we have now our own aircraft. Yeah, which is, uh, like, like you said, that's, that was a, a, an eye opener several years ago and anybody who didn't do it, um, you know, it, it was something that was going to come. And I think there's other sectors of our industry that are a little bit, they're, they're not as quick as, as realising what they should be doing. And if they don't change things now with, with digitization and all the off the shelf, you know, innovative programs that are out there, they're going to lose a huge amount of what they consider to be their core business. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think, um, I think, you know, there's, as, as um, you know, as you know, the, this business, the charter broking business is regulated. So somebody can go into their living room, two telephones, uh, uh, you know, bank account and the facts and, and can get on with it. But I think even for those guys, you know, it's getting tougher and, and it must be getting tougher. Of course, now with uh, with COVID and you know even the the smallest bedroom broker is, is is has done a bit of business and and you know will be around for another couple of years. But in the long term, I think um, you know the the, the industry is changing, and if you don't change with it, and if you yeah. don't diversify, um, you're going to have a problem one day. Um, so the diversification that we've done, and we're not finished. We're we, you know we we're, we're continuing. We've got some we've got some other things going on at the moment which will just diversify our business further. And, you know, it could be in five years, Chris, that our, you know, our core, our, what was once our core business becomes, you know, minimal in terms yeah. of, of, of the bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I think you're right. Uh, now, something something now would say with Magma. So Magma, you, you generally base out of just um, two airports, correct? The Asian Harm. Correct. Yes. And and primarily for the African African continent business. Oh, no, no. Let me explain. So, so Magma, I, I, you know, I, I like to refer to Magma as an LCCC. So you've got your LCC, which is your low cost carrier. Yeah. Magma is a low cost char a cargo carrier. And, and what Magma does, it doesn't actually operate any per kilo business. It operates scheduled charters, or not scheduled, some, some scheduled, some not, 
regular charters on behalf of freight forwarders. Right. So freight forwarder A comes along and says, I want a, uh, I want a Tuesday New York uh, rotation. And, uh, and freight forwarder B comes along and says, I want Singapore on a Thursday. Yeah. And that's what we do. So it's, it's, it's quite a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's quite a simple business in terms of risk. It's a very low risk business because we're operating full charters on behalf of, 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 uh, of certain customers. So the risk, you know, the risk to fill the airplane isn't ours. It's the risk to fill the airplane is with the, is with the freight forwarder. Okay. Yep. Yeah, which is always, which is always good. Now with on the e-commerce side of things and, you know, people suggest that the traditional, the traditional supply chain. So from, from forwarder all the way through to to forwarder at the other end and everybody that's in between, they're never really sure what they're doing or what their responsibilities or what their opportunities are with with e-commerce. So the same thing with the freighter request. Are you getting now uh, opportunities to consolidate for e-commerce product all the way through? Um, let me let me put it this way. So let's just say freight forwarder A, what he puts on that airplane is entirely up to him. But there, you know, there is a there is a big move in the in the industry at the moment, Chris, that these freight forwarders, um, th th there's something now called controlled capacity. It's not a new expression. Uh, it's been around forever. But to the degree that it is today, controlled capacity means the forwarder buys the whole airplane from Hong Kong to wherever, and he then decides what he's going to put e commerce on it, going to put PPE on it, or whatever he's doing. And this has become, you know, co uh, you know controlled capacity is the absolute in, in, uh, in expression in the business at the moment because any freight forwarder that can and has the strength and the, and the size and the scope will go out and charter his own airplanes on a, on a particular route and will do very well. And this is what his customer wants. So, you know, in the past, they, you know, they've had block spaces with a lot of the legacy carriers. What happened with COVID, one, the legacy carriers suddenly said, I'm sorry, we can't fly your cargo, number yeah. one. Yeah. Number two, if we fly your cargo, most definitely not at our pre-agreed rates. Uh, so, you know, forget the rate agreements. And so, you know, a lot of forward have now come along and said, well, this, is, you know, this isn't going to work. And of course, their clients are saying, well, you, freight forwarder have to come up with an alternate an alternate uh, solution for me yeah and so what they're doing now and and you know whether it's uh whether it's magma um whether it's a lot of other a lot of the other uh, 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 child carriers it's coming up more and more are taking are, are selling their capacity it's it's similar to a block space but uh, but on the whole the whole aircraft so and i and i you know i'm very hopeful that the the, at the industry will see the, the advantages of this and, and, and see how a lot of these forwarders are actually de-risking their business. And at the end of the day, they, don't, um, they can now decide which cargo goes on that plane and not the airline. So you know, you've got some of the legacy carriers and you, know, you come along at uh, five hours before the flight and say, I've got two tons and it has to go. The legacy carrier will sell you XBO or BXO or one of these flashy, flashy names, uh, a platinum, platinum surprise or whatever you call it. What that means is they'll take that cargo, but they'll offload somebody else's cargo, and potentially that's your cargo as a shipper. So now you've got freight forwarder controlling that capacity, and the freight forwarder most definitely won't offload necessarily in the same way as a, as a, a, a legacy carrier would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, yeah, it's a big, it's a big difference, but it's a movement that that that's been necessary. Now, the other thing I want to ask you, Rossi, and, and and obviously you've been around, you've been around a fair time. You look back now a few years. You had all the consultants and everybody saying, you know, freight is a finished and freight is no good, and you've got you know criticism of the the queen of the skies and everything else. And now here you are, and you've got a great basis. You've got a seven four seven fleet. And it's very, very, very successful, and it's going to be in demand for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, being around, having been around Chris for, for so many years, I, I have seen so many airlines, charter airlines, come and go. Um, you know, the seven O's, the DC eights. Um, you know, the the wonderful people with wonderful stories, with one or two aircraft that have come into the industry. Um, and you know some some real some real interesting characters as well. You know, I think a lot of people you know a lot of people come into the industry and you know aviation and airplanes are sexy. End of story. They are you know there is 
Nothing like, um, you know, just, I'm here at Frankfurt Airport, you know, in my office I can see aircraft landing and taking off, or I come to work and they're flying above me. Yeah, airplanes are something special, and people, you know, over the years, people have invested in them, and whether it's one aircraft, you know, flying in Africa or wherever, there's just been so many that have come and gone. I don't think everybody can make it work, and, and the markets have been such that, you know, they haven't worked. If you just look back to um, uh, February or January of 2020, yeah. if you go to the newspapers or to the trade press, and I'm not going to name names here, but if you look at how many carriers were reducing fleets, parking fleets, closing operations, um, you know, even even we as Magma at Chatham, we gave back an aeroplane in February of last year, um, not knowing what was going to happen in March. Yeah. Um, but the, the whole industry was in a real downspin at that time. And, and, and look at where we are today. <laughs> no other industry can have such mixed fortunes. I, I, I really is quite amazing. And I do believe that it's going to last a long time. I, I don't see that um, capacity is going to come back um, in the way that it has. And, and, and as I said, I also hope that shippers will, shippers will realize that, wow, my freight's moving. And it's moving, you know, maybe I am paying a bit more here and there, but it's moving, it's moving regularly, it's moving as my freight forwarder says it is, because he's controlling that capacity. So there's, you know, the airline isn't, the legacy carrier isn't, isn't controlling anymore, my freight forwarder is. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a very, very, very different relationship uh, pressure there or, or influencer, which is, uh, which, is, which is very different, very different. And I think there's a couple of other, um, you know, relationship changes as well, like you've got the airports, you know, who, who if they come together as their own ecosystem and start marketing with everybody who's part of that airport, then you've got different competition there between airports rather than just who operates out of the airports. Yeah, I think, correct. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities there. Now you talk about the the oh, business yeah. being sexy, and I've got to say, um, one of the one of the best things I ever did in my life was back in the Lufthansa days. Um, when when I was challenged, and I had to I had to do my weight and balance training, and then do my checkouts. Uh, I did them in Charger and in Shannon. And when you spin a pallet on on the seven four seven, and it works, and everything gets trimmed nicely, not perfectly, but nicely, and you see it take off, it's one of the best feelings in the world. And yeah. to know that you've been involved in the distribution of a safe load and and what you've loaded. And, and I agree with you. And all through the day and night, you know, you'd be there at two o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. You've got different conditions. You go to different places in the world, where, anywhere. It's it's an incredible business to be in. It is. And I think, you know, the, the one thing, what, what you just said, I've, I've, I'm a little bit different to you. I've never been quite so operationally involved, uh, but I'm much more commercially involved. So to compare what you just said, I would be, I would get my kick from loading that aeroplane and having a chargeable weight of say 140 tons yeah, from, yeah. From, a, from a commercial, that would be my kick. Saying you know I've got my steel bars next to my cars and I'm charging that much volume on the cars and I'm charging that much dead weight on that and bring it all together and that airplane's taking off and I've got 140 tons of chargeable weight on it. That's yeah. the that's the commercial dream. Yeah, and, and it's. it's, it's, it's time. Yeah, and it's ironic what you're saying there as well. You 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 would be doing that scientifically, and 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 mixing it around. But one of the problems you've got now with the legacy carriers is people are doing that because they're not declaring it, or because they're they're you know they're turning up late with a cargo, and people haven't got the chance to do a proper ready for carriage check. And then you've got displacement because the 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 capacity isn't optimized, and somebody else is getting offloaded, or the right the right loading criteria is there. So. You know, one is allowing itself to be handicapped in a certain way. And the other side of the business now is taking those handicaps, correcting them, and now running running much, much faster than before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think you just said it. I mean, this is a problem that the legacy carriers have. Um, but they, you know, they very much like the passenger business. I you know, believe they overbook their flights in the expectation that uh, something's going to something's going to stay on ground. Um, and that's the way they do it, and that, and obviously that's that's uh, you know that's part of industry practice, and um, and so be it. But again, you know these big forwarders, they you know they they've been you know, many of them have been very very um, you know positive, aggressive in in taking capacity now and controlling it. And you know it's something that you know maybe 
maybe 15 years ago was was unheard of yeah. and today if you look at you know the some of the press releases out in asia pacific or here in, in europe some of the big forwarders you know schenker is one of the, one of the big guys you know they're buying capacity on a year-round basis uh, on freighters you know what's happened to the to the cargo operators and what's going to happen to them in the in the future there's um you know the business is definitely changing yeah yeah hugely now we spoke about mice another another one that came out i remember when when you guys put out that you um you recruited somebody as the head of the sport vertical yes and i remember saying to my lad he was uh, he's a big rugby player and he, he's in the business and i said to him i said my god if ever there was a job to combine the two industries together what a beautiful job how's that gone uh, well, we've the young lad that we've got started during COVID, um, and we, you know, we took him on. We we actually employed him prior to COVID. Uh, when he joined, obviously things were very quiet, and things have been very quiet. But you know, he's done a lot of back, background work. He's been setting up meetings and, and and doing stuff. But flying at the moment, as you can imagine, because of COVID, there's not a lot going on. Um, you know, we've we've um, you know we've been very very limited in in, in actually moving moving uh, football teams as an example you know I'm, I'm i'm a big fan of my local football team here in uh, in germany uh Vejen Wiesbaden. Right. we're in the third we're in the third division and um we are um, we are um, we're, we're looking to, to to go up to the second division this year and that team actually flies with us so they uh, we do charter planes uh moving them around germany when there's a midweek game and they and they can't bus it so there is a little bit of stuff going on, and and you know I'm, you know, I'm as I said I'm a big fan. So um, you know the fact that we're flying them as well is is, is fantastic. We sponsor a little a little booth there, um, but you know the, the bigger side of it is obviously Euro, European Championships, uh, or whether it's rugby, whether whatever sports there are. I think you know that that whole that whole industry is is in a is in a in a low, and there's not a lot happening. Let's put it that way. So. You know, the expectation is once things get going again, we will we'll be there much more active. And there's a huge appetite for it. I, I am so disappointed with the Lions Tour not being down in, in, in South Africa this year. But there's such a hunger for people to get back to watch sport, whether it's grassroots or whether it's professional or international. So I think once that comes back and it's definitely it, it's going to be brought back and bounced back in such a positive fashion. So. Yeah. You know, you know, it's it's interesting, uh, uh, Chris. I, I've noticed that you know I, I I'm, I'm a football lover. So on my weekends, you know, I, I like to reserve my living room and, and watch TV. You know, at the beginning, it used to bother me that the the, the stadiums were empty and the, there was no atmosphere and so on. I've got used to it. I, I I find it quite. It's it's kind of strange. I don't. It's almost like I, I've got so used to the fact that there's not thirty thousand people there. You know, shouting, shouting and screaming and and all the rest of it. All you hear now are the grunts and groans of the players and the and the uh, the trainers screaming and shouting at the lines. But it's isn't it interesting how we get used to certain things? And uh... yeah. but 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 by getting used to it, one of the things, obviously, and I'm sure you're aware as well, is the home crowd advantage. You know, because look at the percentage of away wins now and things that are happening. It's it's that yeah. now that that does make a big difference. Yeah, good point. Good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, good point. And uh, I think as soon as those crowds come back, it's going to be, you know, people and people are going to appreciate it a lot more. You know, so. Yeah, well, back to sport. I mean, Nick, Nick, Nick is a you know, good young lad, just joined. So there's, you know, there's we, we've just basically it's another vertical that we're, we're looking to invest in and grow. And, um, you know, I haven't really talked about our, our, our new shareholder, which is the, the ASG group. Um, they have a lot of their own metal. They have a, a big fleet of airplanes, all passenger aircraft. So they've obviously had a hard time of, of, yeah. of COVID, but um, but you know very 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 positive, very uh, forward driven uh, business, um, and uh, you know the, the 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 chairman is someone who who's not easily uh, who's not easily put down if you like. I mean he's fighting and, and and keeping the business going, and and you know the expectation is that they you know the passenger aircraft will all be back up again and up again and running by by the middle of this year. Yeah, no, no, I think. I think, well, especially now with the with the way the vaccines are coming through and the effect they're having, I think it's going to, you know, th things are going to open up. And there's also going to have to be a little bit of give and take as well, where countries who aren't as advanced with the vaccines are going to have to do some sort of agreement with those that are. So if you've got a vaccination, whether it's a passport or a, 
a green card or whatever it is, they'll allow they'll allow people in because it reduced risk. But yeah. also one of the areas that that um, that I think is going to come back again hugely is the, is the music tours. Yeah. Well, well, that's an, that's a that's an interesting subject because you know Chatham Freeboard traditionally hasn't really been a, a big player in the in the VIP and, and the private jet business. Yeah. Um, that, that that has a bit of history. Uh, why we didn't at the time when it kind of started with the you know the fall of the Soviet Union, a lot of people went into Russia and there was a you know huge boom of. Um, huge boom of passenger uh, private jets out of Russia at the time and we weren't really involved then and, and what we, um, you know, my, my predecessor Chris Chapman, um, he had a love of music and, um, you know, whether it was uh, Michael Jackson or, or uh, still is today, the, uh, the Rolling Stones or U2 or whoever, um, you know, a lot of the big bands is what we, where we've kind of got our niche in the, in the, in the private jet business. Um, you know, also saying that you know, the private jet business today is is has gone mad. You know, it's uh, it's a business that that um, you know everybody and his dogs chasing. I mean, I, I I've been a you know I've been in a, a CEO and a chairman now for God knows how many. The amount of the amount of emails I get from people I've never heard of on a weekly basis offering me private jets just out of the blue. So they 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 find you somewhere, see that you're a CEO, a C title, or a or a chairman title, and you're you're inundated with people trying to flog you private jets uh, going, you know, with bedrooms and, and, and so on going from A to B. And what, what's a bit scary about it is is that you know what little I know of that industry is is from what I understand the margins in, are, are, are minimal. Um, you know, where where we might be able to add a lot of value and, and a lot of um, knowledge and so on in the cargo side and the passenger side. You know, somebody wants to go to Nice. Um, you know, he he'll he'll get five quotes, and you know, and he or he or she who quotes the lowest will will get the job. So it's it's something that we've never really um, got to got to grips with because it's just not really been you know profitable and profitable enough for us. And um, so we've stuck with our niche, and obviously we've been heavily affected by the lack of touring this year and and uh, sorry last year and most likely this year as well. So all the tours are planned for, for, for next year, and we, which is where we, we hope we'll, we'll again be, be uh, heavily involved. Oh, I think most definitely. Now, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Chris Chapman there. So one yes. of the things I want to ask you now, you, you said how you got into the business, when you got into the business. Now, if, if you were to look back, okay, and it's, don't, don't get me wrong now, Rushi, this, isn't a, this is your life, and a, a, you, know, you know what I'm saying? This is the, like, you know, coming up to the, to the encore. But what I'm saying... When you look back, what what made you stay? Obviously, you mentioned about the learning and the excitement, but when it comes to when it comes to people or mentors or somebody that would have anchored you to that, you know, to to stay in with the company, uh, have you got? Does anything come to mind? Or you know, Chris, it's a, it's an interesting question. I, I come from a um, an upper middle class family, and um, money has never been my motivation ever, and it, it, it isn't today. And it, Never will be. My um, life is life is way too short to be worried about how much money you got in the bank. So money was never a, has never been a concern. I, I think um, you know I started working for for, for, for Chris and, and Carol, Chris Chapman, and Carol Norman, and there were certain things that happened in my early days. Um, I had a I had a, a, a boss, a, a gentleman by the name of um, Bob Thompson, uh, who who employed me at the time, and unfortunately he passed away within two years of me joining. Um, but I learned a lot from Bob, and um, and then I I worked with Chris and Carol, who um, who really treated me incredibly well. And you know I had problem, I had certain problems that they was, that they helped me with, and I never looked back. It was never ever uh, an issue for me to stay loyal to the business. And quite honestly, Chris, you know you know I've always heard about you know somebody being offered a job there and somebody being offered. Nobody's ever bloody well offered me another job. You know, there, so there I am. I'm still here. Um, you know, after all these years, I. Well, maybe no. I, I jokes apart. No, but no, seriously though, nobody has actually ever offered me a job. Um, I wouldn't have been interested anyway. I've always been happy, um, and I've always enjoyed doing what I do. And um, you know, you have great people working with you. Lots and lots and lots of friends that are part of the business. And um, why would you, you know, why would you want to go and do something else? As I said, money's not a motivator. Um, you know, I've travelled the world. I've been everywhere. I, you know, I, it, it's it's perfect. And um, you know. It just doesn't wouldn't wouldn't have made sense for me to go anywhere else and to look anywhere else. That's a lovely that's a lovely endorsement of the company and also your 33 years, we'll see. 
And during that, during that time, um, you've obviously come across some incredible experiences, incredible challenges. What would you say now from a charter perspective are the few that have stood out? So something totally unexpected that you never thought you'd ever get involved in, something that you never thought that you could actually you know, deliver or, or, or provide a service for. What would you say have been the most you know, technically difficult things that have, have been solved by you and your team? You know, one of the things of, of getting over 33 years is my memory is going, Chris. So, but, but I do have a few, I, I, there's a couple of things that, a couple of things that I personally got involved with that, that I will always look back on and I will always remember. And one of them is, is must be going back about 25 years ago. Uh, we did some charters for um, a, a German um, um, NGO uh, operating flights from Djibouti into Somaliland with uh, Hercules. Um, with, uh, with 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 oil and, and foodstuffs and grain and and I uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to Djibouti and, and, and was actually able to go on the flight and um, you know I come from an airline background I've flown my entire life so you know not a problem for me getting on any type of plane but this was a special flight because um, we we just had some coordinates in in Somaliland where we were supposed to land with this Herc and um, and we did and there was basically um, no no runway it was just in the middle of nowhere. It's a guy on the ground with a with a radio, and they, you know, the the, the, the locals had flattened out a piece of land, um, and we landed there amidst you know big big clouds of of of, um, of sand and so on, and um, we got off, lowered the ramp, and um, these people lined up, and you know, all, each one of them put their put a, you know put a can of oil on their shoulders, and 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 did a, did a big line of people, and about you know, 200 meters away were probably about 100 kids all lined up little children all lined up watching this and that was amazing it was absolutely amazing something that i will you know really really never ever forget and um something that um you know it was just the experience you know they, obviously the humanitarian side was great and all the rest of it but flying in a herc um, which is a special airplane a really yeah. fantastic airplane if anybody gets an opportunity fly a herc um uh, but that was that was something special um, you know, we've had we've had so many um, special occasions during the tsunami back in 2002, 2003. Um, we were operating. We were all, you know, we were all, it just happened on Christmas Eve, or I think it was Christmas Day or New Year's Day. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know, we were flying. We, we flew out a family from from the from the Maldives um, that had been basically, you know, they the story they told us is they, you know, they came. It, it happened in the morning. Their their resort got basically flooded completely. Um, their villa that they were in was completely flooded um, and they, through their company in Germany, they, they booked this charter with us. Uh, they turned up at the airport literally in just towels and, and underwear um, to get on a charter back to Germany. I mean, those are, those are kind of things that you just don't forget. Um, but there's, there's really been, you know, from a commercial side, there's just been lots and lots and lots of things. Um, you know, we, I, I have, you know, some, some interesting stories. You have a, a girl that works for, from, for me here, Bettina, who, who uh, many years ago, when the, uh, when the Aleutians first came out, uh, went off, to, went off as, a, as, a, as a flight manager on an Aleutian around Africa and was supposed to end up in, in, in South America. And she got to Port Harcourt and, uh, you know, she was on her own with 10, 10 uh, Russian crews and a, and a money belt full. I'm not going to tell you how much, but a lot of money. And, uh, and the pilot came out and, and showed her this, this big, big um, uh, uh, um, bird that had gone through the engine and explained to her that it should, we'd had a bird strike and that the plane wasn't going to go anywhere. And, uh, you know, fantastic, fantastic story. You know, she's still alive to tell the tale. Um, you know, she was there with, with, with 10 ex-Soviets and, uh, and, and, uh, and um, uh, in, in Nigeria and spent another couple of days there and, um, yeah, made it home with the money belt still intact. I mean, those are the kind of kind of things that I always look for, you know, look at and, and think, wow, you know, those are, those are stories that um, I'll never forget. Everybody, every, they say everybody has a book in them, Russie. You, yes. you should write a book. You know, I, you know, it's funny you should say that. I, I've, got, I've got a lot of stories like that. I just kind of need to sit down maybe on a, on a yeah. beach somewhere and, uh, you know, get a, get a, get a, um, you know, get a margarita going and then start, um, start writing. Yeah, just chuck them out and see how they link up because I'm sure it'd be it'd be an incredible one because anybody anybody that's been lucky enough to be in this industry of ours for long enough and to travel and to have an open mind to travel, you see so much more. I mean, I 
I don't have the same sort of background as you. Mine was mine was a lot lower down the uh, the ladder of success, but I never ever thought I would see the places and meet the people and have the experiences that I did. And I think now that our industry has shone such a wonderful light on how important it is within within the world, within the, the global communities and keeping the, the wheels moving and food on the table, et cetera. Any youngsters now who want to get into an industry, if ever there's one that's had its profile lifted, it's ours and, and it's such a wonderful place to be. Absolutely. Chris, I must say, though, you know, success is, is, is always relative. And, and you know, you, you don't measure, I don't measure people on, on, you know, whether they, what their title is or whether, you know, how much money they got in their bank accounts. That's not, a, that's not a measurement of success. So, you know, I think everybody is successful in their own way and, and, and everybody should, should see themselves successful in their own way. Whether you, whether you got a big title, a little title, you know, whatever, I think, you know, we all do our part. And you know, some of us ha have a bigger part and have a, have a smaller part. But you know, for me, it's success isn't about um, you know a big a big title or anything else. Yeah, no, no, I agree with you, and that's why you can come at it from any angle, any uh, from upstairs, downstairs, left left side, right side, and you become part of a team. But it's the, it's the opportunities to experience that. You know, the the, the world. I, I think two things: the world gets smaller if you travel. And the, and it gets it gets very different as you get older, yeah, and you need to see as much of it as possible to enjoy that that opportunity of life because uh, you know it, it brings so much. It's an incredible thing, and if you're good at something, doesn't matter where you are, whatever you're doing, somebody else is doing in another country in another environment, and you've got the opportunity to go and do it in that particular country. There's so many businesses around every single aircraft that lands on a tarmac. And whether you're looking at it from a tower or a warehouse or out of the out of the window of the aircraft, all those businesses yeah. all but evolve it, around that it, aircraft. It's also the people. So you know, success is also relative to you know nobody can be successful on their own. And in, in the, regardless in which part of life or business, you know, I you know I started uh, working for Chat Free. We were ten people. Um, you know, we were up to three hundred or three hundred and fifty or something like that over the year. You can't grow a business. You can't be successful purely on your own. You've got to have the right team and the right people that want to work with you and, and support you. And, I, and I've been incredibly fortunate to have some incredibly talented people that have worked with me and still work with me today and have just and, and, and so supportive. And, and you know, um, it's, 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 quite, um, it's quite touching sometimes when you, when you, when you get some of the feedback and, um, and I look at all these people that have, have been around for so many years within our organisation great stuff and and that's the that's true success when you can bring everybody up to the same level yeah no it's fantastic we we do we do a, a bi-weekly session um with a guy called david van miller who was ceo of several airlines and he brought them out of chapter 11 and he's done loads of things he 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 wrote a book called turbulence and it's really good I'll make, make a note of that. Okay. Yeah, ser seriously, Rossi, it's it's a nice read. It's really good. Yeah. And some of the things, because he talks about from the 50s, you know, how the industry has changed, what it was like, how skies opened up and, and uh, you know, different trends. And obviously there's there's political there's political issues and, and correctiveness now that, you, you know, you wouldn't get away with now what happened in the old days. But it's a lovely, lovely um, series of, of, of storylines. It's fantastic. But you should do one. And I've got a title for you. From Teddington to tomorrow. <laughs> it's Twickenham, Chris. It's Twickenham. It's close. It's close it enough. Is. I always, it I is. always make me, at it least, is. at least it wasn't, at least it wasn't from Felton to Forgotten. That's which, the best which it could have been. Very true. Very which true. it could have been. Twickenham, 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 Twickenham. Just but, from the rugby ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But seriously, Rossi, it's been an absolute pleasure. Fair play to you. Chris. Congratulations. Continued success. And. Um, much appreciated and I thank you for taking your time and I, I hope it's been interesting for anybody who's been listening and um, yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, sky's the limit, let's, uh, let's keep this industry going, let's keep it going strong and you know, I just hope that the youngsters that are looking and thinking about what to do, um, you know, if you want to keep learning throughout your life, become a charter broker, start getting into the industry, be a trader, because you, you never learn everything, impossible. Yeah, I agree with you there, my friend. But seriously, it's lovely speaking to you again, Russi, and thanks very much for your time and look forward to seeing you again somewhere. 
Absolutely. Uh, and being able to travel to that place. So please God. All right, Chris, take care. Have a good one. All the best, my friend. Cheers. Thank you.